Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at our systems. We have Hurricane Pamela that is making its way inland in Mexico, and we also have that disturbance over in the Atlantic Basin. And so we're also going to be talking about some more in this video, such as the conditions that are persisting across the basin and the potential for any development very soon. And so before I get into details... Right, so of course let's start off with Pamela. So as of right now, it is making its way into Mexico. It is a compact hurricane and it was uh, expected to actually strengthen and be near major hurricane strength. But the cyclone has been, been battling some unfavorable conditions that have been inhibiting much intensification. And it actually weakened yesterday back down to a tropical storm, but now it has re-strengthened into a hurricane. And so let's take a look at the corn forecast from the National Hurricane center and we're seeing here that Pamela has maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the northeast at 14 miles per hour. So we do have a hurricane warning as well as a tropical storm warning that are in place for portions of Mexico. So those areas are expected to actually feel the worst of Pamela, uh, which has actually begun there. Those conditions are expected to be happening there, such as the heavy rainfall, the gusty winds, and even that storm surge. So so it is likely that those conditions will be persistent throughout today in the areas that are in the warning zones. And so we have a tropical storm warning which is highlighted in blue that is in effect for north of Bahia Tempehuaya to Altata for the south of Esquinapa to Cabo Corrientes and for Islas Marias. And then we have a hurricane warning which is highlighted in red. That is in effect for Bahia Tempehuaya to Esquinapa. So those areas are going to be experiencing the worst of Pamela as it is going to be accelerating inland. And so afterwards, Pamela is going to rapidly weaken because of course it is not getting anything that it needs in terms of the warmth and the moisture. It's basically cut off from all those favorable conditions. Hence, weakening is going to be as a result as the cyclone accelerates inland. So it's going to rapidly weaken. However, it's going to be bringing all that moisture. And so this is going to induce rainfall in other portions of central Mexico during the next couple of days. And then the remnants are likely to make their way over into the southern portion of Texas by the end of this week. But eventually we're going to have the system dissipating and it is not expected to be anything very, very major. All right, so let us go ahead and take a look at what is going on over in the Atlantic. So we have one disturbance there, uh, not designated as an invest. It's located to the north of Dominican Republic. And we're seeing here that it's given a low 10% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next couple of days. And the chance is so low because conditions are not so favorable that are going to enable development of this system here. And so this is going to be making a curve to the east and not expected to be a threat to land after that point. So if conditions manage to get a little bit more conducive, then we will see this chance increasing. But as of right now, it does not seem likely that we will have development of this. But rainfall is expected to continue in portions of Hispaniola as well as the Turks and Caicos Islands. So if you're there, please be mindful of that. Even extend into portions of uh, Puerto Rico, probably the Virgin Islands as well. So nothing major expected, but probably some Clement weather in those regions but after that point after the next few days the system is not likely to be much of a threat to land and then taking a look at the rest of the Atlantic Basin, we have some areas of moisture. We have that wave in the Caribbean south of Haiti, and we also have all that moisture to the east of Trinidad and Tobago right there. So, so due to the current conditions, development does not seem very likely to happen imminently. So let us take a look at how things are. And so first up, let's talk about the wind shear map. And so we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear. We have the green that means favorable, the yellow that means neutral, and the red that means unfavorable. So when you see a lot of those red lines extending across anywhere, that means that the shear is quite unfavorable and 
not going to be supporting any tropical cyclone development. And so that is exactly what we're seeing here. It's mainly unfavorable shear that is extending across portions of the main development region, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and in the vicinity of that disturbance. So development is not really anticipated of this but once conditions as i said earlier get a little bit more favorable then we could see maybe a slight increase in the formation chance next let's talk about the saharan dust so this is dry air coming from the saharan desert in africa and so we have the different colors that indicate how dense the dust is we have the light yellow that means there isn't a lot of dust while we have the dark orange going to that red shade meaning that the dust is more dense in those regions and so taking a look at the main development region we do have that pocket of saharan dust so this should infiltrate all that moisture to the east of trinidad and tobago so this is likely to help all that shower and thunderstorm activity to dissipate as time goes by so not a lot is expected of that moisture that is currently there but in terms of our disturbance we don't have much dry air but conditions are not expected to be very favorable to, to accommodate development of a tropical system as for the rest of the Caribbean we do have some spots of dry air over in the western section but for the most part most of the area is quite clear from all that Saharan dust. And so now let's go ahead and finally take a look in terms of conditions on the sea surface temperature map. And so we're seeing here that we have the Caribbean being the warmest section right now, the Northwestern Caribbean specifically. So if we have any disturbances that would make their way into the Caribbean and we have favorable shear and no dry air intrusion, then that would really set the stage for some rapid intensification. But fortunately, conditions are not so favorable right now, but things can change at any time and we still have the month of November left. And that is usually when we have our tropical systems originating from the Caribbean and making their way up to the north. So we'll definitely have to pay keen attention as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this month and going into next month. Alright guys, and so let, let us go ahead and take a look at something that the GFS is showing, the final run of for the latest update on the model and so this is a map that shows the isobars and so the isobars are lines of equal pressure and when you see them being very close in a circular manner with the pressure below 1013 millibars that is a low pressure system and can be or tropical cyclones so that is what we're looking for here and this is by friday the 29th of october so this is just a prediction guys it does not have to be what takes place so yesterday gfs was anticipating some development in the caribbean uh going into the last the latter part of the month now the model is not really showing anything much developing at that time but it is showing something quite interesting increased moisture in the region so so in the vicinity of the south caribbean we see that 1007 millibar low pressure system and also some increased moisture also there for portions of the northeastern caribbean so again this does not have to be the outcome we have to really wait and see what is going to be happening things can change and things have been changing so we really have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be and so guys that is really it for this updated video on the tropics i will keep you updated as time goes by and if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments to ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be with the wise.